How are you doing? Thanks for coming to join us at the Refuge Christian Church in our annual Family Garden Prayer Experience. This year, we're going to be learning about three trees. Three trees you're probably already aware of, that you already know about. But I think you'll enjoy the journey as we pray together and learn more about why Jesus came during this Holy Week. Come on, let's go. Welcome. Please take a piece of fruit. God does good work. In Genesis chapter 1, at the end of each day of creation, God was pleased with the work he had done and called everything he made good. On the sixth day, when God made Adam and placed him in the beautiful garden Eden, it was though God finally got to share with someone else who understood deeper than the earth and seas, who understood far more than the plants and animals. Adam and Eve were made in God's likeness and in his image. And he put Adam in this perfect and good garden. God does good work. Genesis 2, verses 8 through 9, read this way. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, and there he placed the man he had formed. The Lord caused to grow out of the ground every tree, pleasing in appearance and good for food, including the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the, as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. After a little more instruction about the garden and what made it so wonderful, God gave a command to Adam in Genesis 2, verses 15 through 17. The Lord God took the man and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and watch over it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. I hope you heard that God wanted Adam and his offspring to eat the fruit of all the trees except one. God, who makes good things, has always wanted good for us. Unfortunately, we haven't always chosen the good he offered. What is your favorite fruit that God has made for us to eat? It is good that you are here. God still wants good for us. Please pray with me before continuing on your journey. Heavenly Father, Thank you for bringing us together to learn. God, we ask that you will continue to give us eyes to see and ears to hear and open minds to understand the good that you, God, want for us now and forevermore. In your holy name, amen. Station two, the tree of life and the tree of death. Psalm 34, 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. Were you able to taste how good the fruit is that God has made at the first station? Indeed, God is good. During the first station, you heard in Genesis 2, 9 that God had placed two trees in the middle of the garden. Do you remember what those two trees were called? First one is the tree of life, and the second one is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. From the beginning of creation, God was establishing a relationship with mankind built on trust. God gave us access to everything he made with a primary command that said we could eat of any tree. And he also gave us a consequence if we would choose to eat from the only tree God asked Adam not to eat. God doesn't force people to follow him. He invites us and shows us how. He's given us his special revelation, the Bible. The collection of books from prophets, priests, kings of the Old Testament that Jesus fulfilled, as well as the first-hand accounts of the apostles and their close companions. These scriptures teach us what knowing God and following him is all about. Although God hasn't put us in a perfect garden, he has set before us the same choice of life or death. 
No longer is that decision dependent upon picking a fruit from a tree. It is dependent upon whether or not we choose to follow Jesus. But for now, let's get back to the story of Adam and Eve. God gave them a choice to choose either life or death. If asked point blank, would you rather live or die, they would have chosen to live. I'm sure we would choose the same, right? But what happened? And you'll see before the next video. Pray for wisdom to understand the difference between life and death and obedience to choose life. You've now made it to station three. And mortally speaking, if you're watching this video, you're alive. But spiritually speaking, and eternally speaking, we're alive when we're obeying God, when we're doing what His desire and His design for us is. Now, when we're not doing that, when we've sinned, we're kind of like Adam and Eve. Remember Genesis chapter 3, Eve was enticed by the serpent to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and when she ate of it, she sinned. And she gave it to her husband, seeing that it was good for her body. It tasted just fine. And he ate of it, and, and he sinned because God had given them the command not to do it. Well, whenever that happens, whenever we go against God's desire, when we go against His design, our eternal spirit is literally killed. It dies. And we are separated from God. In the garden, Adam and Eve they hid when they heard the voice of God. They hid behind leaves and behind the other trees in the garden because they were ashamed. And because spiritually, there's a death that happens and we know that only God can give us death or life. Now, it's really easy for us to think, man, I can just point my fingers of blame at Adam and Eve. But we are reminded in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, with these words, in the same way that sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, sin spread through all people because all have sinned. See, you and I, we can't point our fingers at Adam and Eve because we're not without ignorant, or we're not ignorant. We have knowledge. We know what God designed. We know what His desire is because of His written word. And whenever we choose to go against it, we ourselves sin. We eat from that same tree, that same forbidden fruit, resulting in a spiritual death in us. Now when that happens, we know that we need to confess our sins. In James chapter 5, we're encouraged to confess our sins to one another and to pray for each other. And I, I want to challenge you, if you've never confessed your sins, to say, you know what? I need to write my relationship with God. I invite you to do that with somebody today. Don't wait. I'm going to pray for us as we remember and realize everything that, that we've done and what Jesus has done for us. And as we ask for forgiveness for our sins. God, we thank you that in spite of us choosing to eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil that resulted in our own spiritual death, that there is hope for us when we confess our sins to you. So we confess that we have sinned, asking for your forgiveness and for wisdom to repent and to follow you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. I'd like you to imagine for a second that a tree was planted or perhaps a seed fell to the ground and germinated around the time Jesus was born. It was probably a dogwood tree, but that's beside the point. The point is that a tree was standing when Jesus was abruptly put on trial. And then that tree was cut down for the sole purpose of becoming a cross for a pending crucifixion. A tree lost its life because Adam and Eve sinned long ago and because you and I sinned. To fulfill scripture, Jesus became our same kind sacrifice and was hung on a cross from a tree. Some 300 to 400 years before this time in Persia is when crucifixion was developed as a process of killing. The Romans perfected this process. 
In Deuteronomy 21, 23, the Israelites were told that anyone who is hung on a tree is double cursed. In Galatians 3.13, the New Testament, the Apostle Paul quotes that Old Testament promise, saying, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Because it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Jesus became a curse that paid for the sins that all of mankind chose. The forbidden fruits that we choose apart from God's desire and design. This cross, the tree of the curse, stands in the center of our hope. A tree lost its life so it could play in taking a role of the life of our Savior. This is a crucial part to Holy Week. It was Thursday night, similar to tonight, when Jesus brought his disciples into the upper room for Passover. He prepared the meal and he told him about its fulfillment by his body and by his blood. And then Judas betrayed him that night. Overnight, Jesus was tried. Friday morning, he would be hung on a cross. And by Friday evening, Jesus has died. So what do you think about when you learn that Jesus had to die because of our sins and the sins of everyone before, during, and after his life? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we just want to say sorry for the way we've lived, for the paths we've chosen. We're sorry that you had to die the way you did, hung on a tree because of our sins. At the same time, we look at your act as an act of selflessness of putting us before you and it's just humbling to think that way father that that you love us that much that you sent jesus down to die this way for us i pray that we can dwell on these thoughts and also on the hope that you are going to provide that you have provided for us with what is to come amen let's stop and think for a minute about the three trees that you've encountered on your journey tonight do you remember what each of them were Think about the good fruit that God has placed and blessed you with in your life. Reflect on that for a moment. Now let's think about Adam and Eve and the choice they made to be disobedient to God and the consequences that brought sin not only into their lives, but through that disobedience down through time has brought sin into our lives as well. Think about some of the times that perhaps you were disobedient and the consequences that you may have encountered as a result of that. You know, with sin and disobedience, there's always consequences. Some of them are temporal. There are things that we pay for down here on earth with our bad choices. But there are eternal consequences as well. And unless we have a relationship with Christ who paid on the cross for those sins, that disobedience, uh, we we don't have the opportunity to be in heaven with him forever. Christ, when he hung on that cross, that third tree, he paid for those sins. He atoned for those sins. We, we had the opportunity to receive his righteousness instead of our sinfulness. That's how God views us from that point on when we accept him as late Savior and Lord. Think about that for a minute. What an, what an opportunity that is. What an invitation to have our slate wiped clean, to be forgiven of everything that we've ever done, everything that we ever will do, and to be able to live eternally with Him. 
But you know, the, the real miraculous part of this story doesn't end with his death on the cross. Jesus predicted multiple times of his death and resurrection. In Luke, three times he told the disciples that he would be crucified and, and rise again on the third day. And to his opponents, he told them that if they destroyed this temple, meaning his body, he'd raise it again in three days. And literally that promise was fulfilled on Easter Sunday so many years ago when he arose from the grave that Sunday morning to new life for him and for us. On Thursday night during the Passover meal when he was gathered with his apostles, he shared with them that he was going to prepare a place for them, a place where they could be with him forever. Thomas, in confusion, said, Master, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? He replied, Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. When Jesus conquered death and arose, he finished, he completed that access that we needed to get back on a restored relationship and be able to spend that eternity with him in those mansions he's preparing for us. And in heaven, we'll again have an opportunity to see that tree of life. In the last chapter of Revelations, we read, then he showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the city's main street. The tree of life was on each side of the river, bearing twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations. And so just as Adam and Eve's disobedience in eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil resulted in a broken relationship with God, our own disobedience or sin without Christ's sacrifice bars us from heaven. Christ's sacrificial death and resurrection provides a means by which our relationship can and will be restored. We can again live in fellowship with Him through His Spirit here on earth and eternally with Him in heaven. We're going to face some challenges this Easter as believers. We're uh, bar from gathering and fellowship with one another on, in worship. We're uh, going to be estranged perhaps from family members and a, a meal that we normally share together. But you know, Christ uh, is bigger than any problem that we can have. He, he talked in the Gospel of John that in this world we, we're going to have trouble. We can count on it. But he also commented to be of good cheer that he's overcome the world. So whatever we face through this particular crisis that we're in right now, whatever challenges we may face in the future, God is bigger than all of that. And through Him and with His strength, we will ultimately be the overcomers. Our job is still, as it is every other day of the week, in times of blessing and times of crisis, to be good stewards of the gifts that He gives us, to be faithful in sharing the message, be faithful in meeting needs, Let's focus on what we can do and accomplish in this time rather than not focused on what we can't do, what we're limited by doing. So I hope you have a blessed Easter. If you've not made a decision to uh, accept Christ and you've been challenged somewhat by some of the things you've heard tonight, please contact Jeremiah or one of us. We'd love to explore the scriptures with you and share with you how you can have a new life in Christ, strength and fellowship with Him and through Him. Have a blessed Easter. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this experience. And if you want to follow up with us, you can find out more about The Refuge at refugecc.us. Email me, jeremiah at refugecc.us, the pastor of The Refuge. And if there's anything we can do for you, join us Easter if you don't have any other service that you're watching. We'll be premiering our videos on our YouTube channel right at 1030 and also on Facebook. So like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we look forward to seeing you on Easter. Enjoy the resurrection, the great hope that we have that our Savior lives. Mm -hmm.